Let's give time for delay to catch up. I think that's long enough. Hello, everyone. Good evening, bozos. Welcome to the Money Pigs live cast brought to you by MOBA-Champion.com. This is a Dawngate roundtable discussion show where we talk about all things Dawngate, oddly enough. Uh, I am Twerp78, along with uh, MOBA Champion RL John, Spinal Dash, the Blue Muzzy, and joining us as our special guest and high elo insightful player, master of the Dawngate, uh, Tulse. Welcome, Tulse. Thank you. I hope that was an appropriate introduction. No, you should have called me a scrub because I make a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, welcome, guys. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. We've seen uh, a new patch over the weekend. We had a battle in the bot lane tournament over the weekend that Spinal eventually showed up for. Uh, <laughs> uh, besides that, yeah, a new Shaper release. So uh, uh, crazy cool stuff happened with the, our first uh, topic of the night at the beginning of every show. We like to talk about what's going on in the lore. So we had a new uh, chapter in the Chronicles revealed today. Um, and in this, the interesting about this chapter was it directly uh, was the result of the first living lore vote we had where uh, we saw Zalgus and Reyna, the choices between, you know, going west or going to find out what happened with Kindra, going to find out what happened with Kindra, won the lore vote, and this is the chapter we got because of it. Uh, I want to say a, a masterful job by, by Waystone in just the fact that not giving people what they expected, you know, you expected them to go to the abby and see kindra but in fact we got what could be a new shaper a new character we got we got introduced to a new character regardless and uh the no kindra to be found so i mean what was your just initial uh, like I, I was very happy with their decision to not show kindra and have it in kind of swerve people just so to keep living lore uh, uh like uh, oh we're gonna vote for this because this is what we want it's like okay you vote for that but th th don't necessarily think you're gonna get what you want in that vote so what would you guys mm -hmm. think of just that decision to not kind of to, to go a different way with that well i, I think much love between kendra <laughs> arena and zaugus i was looking forward to like a heartfelt reunion like a bro this is all i got <laughs> I think yeah. it's still coming. I mean, they gotta find Kendra eventually, eventually in the next two or yeah. three panels. Unless it's just flattered a mystery, she's gone forever, and the rest of the story is the new Shaper, but I suspect she'll come to light by the end of the week. I, uh, I thought that, uh, you know, Reyna was gonna show up, and Kendra would be the one to have slaughtered everybody and was there, and and Reyna would kind of come to the realization that, uh, you know, there are there's evil in the world and it can even be in your closest friends. So I, I thought this was going to be a major growing point for uh, for Reyna. And I, I'm not necessarily let down, but I, I definitely want to see that at some point. I'm sure that'll come up. But uh, this whole new shaper thing, I think this is going to be one of those incidental shapers where uh, I think they're introducing a new kind of thing to the world where there's a shaper that shows up but dies and or, or is oh, consumed by the vitality character. and doesn't actually become I'm that's what I'm guessing um because that would be really awesome to show that well just because you're shaper doesn't mean you're immortal outside of the dawn gate because you're not um I, I just I want to see something like that happen but I'm, I'm calling it now I'm, I'm hoping for that kind of thing yeah I mean like her theoretical kit from the panel like some big <laughs> green goo thing <laughs> like She's I don't know I didn't I don't know. It, it 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 seems to at least leave a little bit of credence to your theory of like like I I I'm having trouble picturing this like little girl with this green monster thing. So mm -hmm. maybe she just dies. Kendra steps out and she's like, oh, missed one. Boom, got the reset. <laughs> Pieces out and that's it. Got the reset. That would be hilarious. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That would be. I would deal with that. I would. I I can't. I will say though that in that last panel, number forty three. Um. Like this girl is is she is disturbed. She has seen some things. So it's like the 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 prelude to to the storm that's coming. And and I really love what they did with the the panels. There's no distinct panels. The edges aren't nice and crisp and black. They're they're all kind of fuzzy on the end and they're weird shapes. And it's it's just this girl just kind of exploding in her mind and and gaining access to her power that she's probably just as freaked out about as what she just saw Kendra do to everybody. Um, unless this is the girl that did it to everybody and they're rewriting the lore to kind of to match things. But mm -hmm. I, either way, this is a, it was a really cool thing to, to see that we affected the the path. It was cool. Definitely. 
if they uh, if they do make a shaper out of her like in game, I can definitely see some Annie style vibes with like this like just giant creature that she pulls down as like a little girl. I could I could work with that. That would be cool. Yeah. Did, did you guys ever? I mean, I might be dating myself, but do you ever? Does anyone remember a game called Booger Man? It was oh like yeah. Sega like Genesis. It was like a platformer. It was kind of like in that Earthworm Jim vibe. That's totally what I got from this chick. I was like, oh, she's got the vitality of snot, and she's going <laughs> to sneeze on everybody and probably poison them and all these awesome. other things. And I was, that's where I was totally going with it. So There's a Sega Genesis game I'm thinking of, and it's not called Booger Man. Are you sure it was called Booger Man? It was called Earth? Booger Man, and like yeah. the tagline was a pick-and-flick adventure. Don't ask oh. me why I remember that, but that, okay. yeah. yeah right. awesome. I remember that game. She looked like a bandit, though. Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, There's he had, like, the game. mask uh, and everything. Yeah, he had a mask gross. and stuff. Yeah, but He's his gross. special skills were derived from boogers and stuff. God bless. Awesome. The, the design is really cool, though, because I just imagine this girl, like, in her alt form, she kind of curls up into a ball and is raised up into the chest, and you just have this giant green monster that just beats things or... Yeah, like it, it yeah. could be really cool, but I, I just see her dying or, or, being, <laughs> or being. That would be a really cool twist. Or, I didn't even I honestly yeah. didn't even think about that until you brought it up. And I'm like, you know what? That's cr incredible because we've never seen a shaper die. You know, right? Well, we, also, every shaper that we know just exists in the Dawn Gate has made it to the Dawn Gate. Yeah. So but I mean, there, there could also be some form of um, separation of, of the, the vitality and, and the person like curing her in a way i guess i i don't know just something interesting i, I just don't think that she's going to be a main character or even a, a secondary character I, I see something happening uh away from that i mean Fair that's enough. wise because we do have a lot of characters to yet to be revealed but um i think reason we haven't seen any shapers die is because usually it's their vitalities that do something to keep them alive like in reina's mm -hmm. case or volick's case um especially or volick Poor Volick. Oh, that's the other never, thing never I rested. wanted to bring up in regarding to lore. We got audio logs in the uh, collection, God, they're amazing. So good. which they're are so amazing. If you don't know where they are, they're in the collection. When you when you select a shaper, if you there's a tab on the right that says lore, and there's a whole little write down of, of of what's said. But it's an audio log. You can hit play and listen to the shaper tell their story. And some of them are like fun, like little pieces of like comedic moments yeah. and some of them are like super depressing and make yeah. me want to cry and amaranth well, is a Kendra's. dirty cerulean beater oh, and good. you can hear her get the reset <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. yep. what'd you guys think of just like the audio lore stuff like uh, like that totally caught me by surprise and i was super impressed with it i've yeah. only listened to three and and i I think about it sometimes while I'm at work. I'm like, man, I'd really like to listen to dibs right now or something. And and I, I realize that I, I don't have access to that because I don't have the client at work. So if somebody wants to do something and put it on YouTube uh, in a playlist form, that would be awesome. Working um, I'm looking for the audio log of the uh, that's not in the client because I think we should link that because that one is fan – here it is. I got oh, it right. The one oh, the is August. Yeah. Yes, it's fantastic. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, that was fantastic. the first part of our lore choice. They 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 mm. released one of these audio logs, um, uh, for as the path on the way to the abbey, and then we saw the chronicles, which was them at the abbey. I forgot to mention that. That was actually mm -hmm. very cool too. And even like you hear like the horses walking in the background and stuff. Like, everything. Yeah. So cheesy. <laughs> I love it. I just really like the cadence they chose for the two shapers. If you if you listen to it the first time, like the first time I was listening to, it, I was like, uh, this they're talking really fast. People don't talk this fast, but then. With those two characters, especially, you know, and their rapport they have, it kind of all worked together. It's really yeah. nice. They're like bickering siblings. Right, know? exactly. Just, they just fire at each other. Off exactly. And off. Yeah. It's really neat. I think I found it. I'm going to paste it in the chat. I think this is Spinal it. Has it. Yeah. Oh, Spinal got it already? Way to go, Spinal. Nice. What did you link? Yeah. Did you link the same one? Yeah. I mean, I linked a, essentially it's just a YouTube. Another one, cool. probably. Anyway, so yeah, that's cool. Other than that, that was... the last uh, little bit of uh, lore uh, the discussion to talk about is, is the current choice, or not the current choice, but the choice we had over the weekend. We had so a little three-day window, and it was kind of, you know, it only involved one shaper. It was just Michaela. It was whether she should go investigate Petrus's experiments, which, i.e., is Vex, or should she go console Varian and help him out while he, like, gets over, like, his dead friends or whatever. I don't know. That sounds boring. But uh, 
I, I voted for go check out what's going on with Vex. But what do you guys think about just in general to like, do you prefer the long duration lore choice or did you like the weekend choice? Do you think it's somewhere in the middle? Do you think there should be choices that take longer and some take shorter? Like, what do you guys think about that whole format? I well, think it would be really cool if you had like, oh, we need to make a decision now in the lore and it was a weekend one and, and maybe mm -hmm. like one that takes a, a journey or something like that. It takes a little bit longer, you know, like the one, the first one that we did. But I, I can definitely say that, um, I mean, I, I had a real life this weekend. I, I went up to Santa Barbara. <laughs> I was not really in the house. I, I, I didn't play much video games and uh, I didn't Fit really first. get... Yeah, I didn't really get to participate as much. It, it didn't seem as heavy to me um, when you're just watching this go back and forth. So maybe somewhere in the middle for like the longest one and then have some really short ones. That's pretty fun. It's a cool idea, Twerp. What, what, I, what I don't like is it seems like the very first day decides it whether it's three days long or two weeks long. Yeah. Like I don't ever see the bar move at all. Um, if they could figure out a way to make your moment-to-moment -moment choices better, like, you know, let's say each hour or each four-hour window is worth, like, one vote, like, one, like, <laughs> meta me. vote, and whichever whatever choice wins that hour gets, like, one point, because right now, as it is, it it could last for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. My games don't matter at all, because the it's already been decided on day one. So I that's actually a good of, point, John. Uh, I feel it's like really there might point. be a flock mentality, too. Yeah. Like, some people would be like, oh my goodness, the bar is going in Vex's favor. Let's change my vote. And then you start piling it up on that way. Like, mm -hmm. I know there's, like, I, I talked to some people and they, they don't really care and they just want to be on the winning side. So they just end up changing their vote. That's like, true. These are the people that just don't care, right? So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I, it, I I like the shorter duration ones because they give you a sense of uh, urgency, a sense of like definitely. my vote matters. Like the two week one after the first three days, anyways, it was just kind of like I kind of just have that thing checked off. So I think the I shorter ones are the way to go. Go ahead. I tell you what, Spinal, it feels a lot like Dawn Gate, where it just snowballs out of control quickly, uh -huh. and then the rest <laughs> of your votes don't matter. Well said. Well said. Zing. <laughs> Um, I, you know what, John, I, you brought up a really good point about that, that like, let's take, um, I, I don't know what, what they call it or what the term for it is, but you know, take all the votes that happen within that hour or whatever time frame you're talking about. And then it's like, yeah, now it counts for a point. So then it plays into both sides because it's like, you know, for this one, I'm going to vote this side. And then for this next chunk where they gather data, I'm going to vote this side just because I like to switch, you know, I'm an ambivalent person, uh, but other ways, you, you will feel more of like that. Um, you will feel like you're contributing more in that way, at least, because it's you, you're dealing with the smaller time frames. But it's a part of a longer, of a more all-encompassing vote throughout the whole weekend. But maybe there's you know yeah. six or seven different like gather points where it's like at this point we're going to take all the votes, and at this point, so that's an the interesting way to look at it. The only downside, of course, is that you could clinch the vote like halfway through, um, so that could that could suck too. But uh... I don't know. I'm I'm sure they're they're taking the feedback and finding a way to make it better for everybody for you know upcoming votes. Yeah. Why? Because beta. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, iterative beta. Yeah. yeah. But it's cool that we get to you know kind of be here and 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 be with this stuff from the beginning, from the ground up, and uh, and help influence how it will be you know finalized when the, when the final product does come around. So it's very cool, exciting stuff with the living lore, but. We're here to talk about a game, and our game had a big change this uh, past week in the release of Basco, as well as a pretty hefty patch, which changed a lot of stuff. But first and foremost, Basco, the Bozo, the Bruiser, the Destructor, the Eater of Worlds, whatever you want to call him, was Eater released uh, to, uh, I guess fanfare i don't know if that's the appropriate but he definitely <laughs> he sparked a reaction a out of the community <laughs> yeah, i like 2.0 i like him a lot he's fun to play he is very Certainly. fun to play regardless mm -hmm. whether or not he's rampaging throughout the countryside or not mm -hmm. i think he's I, I like playing hard. against Bozo. i like playing against the bozo basco yeah <laughs> i have it a lot is, of fun playing easy. against him it like, is. whenever I see him chasing me, I know he's going to throw that all down. I'm like, oh, time to outplay this. <laughs> <laughs> I have not landed more than, I don't know, maybe 10% of my ults. His ult is actually surprisingly hard to hit. 
I know. It is. It is. It's, got a wind up, it's got a wind up time. It really yeah. messes with me. And a it travel time, really. Yeah. And travel time. It messed with me a lot. The first, uh, the, the second game that I played him. First game, I don't think I really threw his ult unless I was standing in front of somebody to get the absolute, absolutely get the reset. Second game, it was like a week later after I finished my Freya games, and I was, I'm miserable with his ult. I, I didn't land any of them almost, so <laughs> it's fun to learn, though. Well, if it makes you feel better, his ult is actually better used in the early mid game as like an execute. Mm -hmm. Only in the late game, like you should really use it as an initiation tool. Like that yeah. execute is so much. Depending how you itemize, though, right? Yeah, but the early base damage on it is just so crazy. So. Yeah, the the one thing that I found for him is that, or I found two things. One is that uh, he clears incredibly healthy, uh, albeit a little slow, uh, still very very healthy. Um, yes. And so it leaves him open to actually gank, do money pigs and gank, or skip money pigs and gank tw uh, two lanes with the amount of health that you have. Um, the the uh, the other thing that I found is that people complain about him, but they they keep focusing on the issue instead of trying to figure out the the solution. And and I think honestly yeah. the solution has been slows, mortal strike, and ruin. And uh, I was up against a team who had that, and I, there was nothing I could do. I was just I mean I'm not particularly amazing, but there was nothing I could do compared to when they well, didn't have, have those. Have items. some confidence, dude. You are a great guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'm saying I'm not a comp I'm not competitive level, but I mean playing at the gold plat level, I I have noticed that you completely shut them down. Like I was playing Freya and I could out duel him no problem. I mean she is the duelist, you know. But uh, I I think here actually Cus Q T. How do you say his name? Cus Q T. It's just Cus. Like All right, cool. Custom All right, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and link that. He he made a Reddit post which uh, is it's got some really even keeled. Um, uh, discussion about uh, Basco, and I, I highly suggest everybody read that. I think a lot of the issues with Bozo, I mean Basco, um, <laughs> a lot of the issues with Basco revolve around, it's, it's a combination, it's like a perfect storm of how his kit works, which is a high mobility, high tankiness kit, combined with the, the admittedly overpoweredness of the hunter role. Um, when you have somebody that can pop out of the pop out of the, pop out behind you, and he's he's at that crucial level six, and you're still level four, and he has the mobility to take advantage of that ridiculous advantage he has. Um, so like, it's kind of like Viridian in reverse. I feel like Viridian is a little bit underpowered because I think his best role is going to be Predator, and um, it just it's not in a good place right now. So Viridian is kind of a little a little underpowered. Basco's best role right now is definitely Hunter, and Hunter is uh, admittedly a little bit overpowered, so it's just like the two things kind of meet together and build off each other. I think that's uh, I, again, though, I, I'm wondering if this is one of those cases where, like, they've been slowly releasing these patch notes, doing things to the game over a period of time in preparation for, you know, what Gasty teased, which was the progression system, oh, right, right, and, right. and a, a vast change of the game. So I'm, I'm wondering if, like, he just doesn't fit in this environment right now and maybe in the future he fits a lot better um we're gonna have to be patient with that this is beta right regardless of whether or not he fits in the way the game is now the fact of the matter is he's in the game now yeah and it's true and while i don't while i okay i will preface this i will say i think basco might be a little over tuned mm -hmm. if you will i don't think it's as egregious as some people have right. have made it out I to think, be um yeah. i think first and foremost i think his passive needs different scaling depending on which stat it is because if you do it with armor you i mean <laughs> i was walking around i i don't remember exactly what the situation was but i'm like i have 100 armor right now and like i'm level four with just the resilience and i have like 18 armor in my loadout but damn i should not have 100 armor this early regardless if this is my passive and it's and it's what makes me strong like I, someone had some the uh, May have made like a numbers tuning in one of these Basco OP please nerf things, but I think more than anything, it's his his passive needs different tuning on depending on the stat, and his shield makes him a little too safe in the jungle right now. Like, there's no excuse for clearing the jungle without even using a pot. Like, that's too much. Right. Reminds me a little bit of Kendra pre uh, pre nerf. Yeah, when she could jungle. Right. Yeah. I mean, her jungle was pretty slow too. It was very very similar. It was slow. Yeah. It was the slow. Problem with him. She came out strong. So. Yeah. Like, my biggest problem with Basco right now is, like, first of all, it's the first week. So, 
everything changes during the first week. Like when I remember, who was it? When Ferris first came out, everyone was like, oh, he's okay, he's okay. And then I started playing Ferris and I was like, oh my God, you can cheese the crap out of people at level two and kill them because they underestimate the percentage-based damage. And then suddenly right. everyone is like, oh my God, Ferris is so OP. <laughs> yeah, like, like with, with a lot of Shaper releases, you have to like crack down their kit and exploit their weaknesses. That's like, that's how right. you play Dongate at a high level. If you don't do that and you lose lane and you whine about it, you have no excuse because you're just not trying to actually beat the person. And if you just become a keyboard warrior and start going, yo, man, that's OP, I can't do anything about it, jungle gank for me, and jungle comes gank, and then you guys die, and it's a 3v2. Like, that's still your own fault. You have to understand matchups and stuff like that. What I, I, is... I, I, I liked one of my games where some guy got ganked by Salus, died, and he's like, oh, what the fuck, Basco OP. Uh, he's like, doesn't even know what yeah, he's gonna right? by. Like, if you push up, any bruiser is going to kill you. Moy is going to kill you. Fog is going to kill you. Basco is going to kill you. Petrus is going to kill you. Like, it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Junglers mm -hmm. are strong. Bruisers are strong. Like, obviously, he's overtuned. Like, if anybody comes out and says, oh, Basco is probably a little underpowered, you guys just suck. I mean, they're just an idiot or they're trolling. Yeah, I guess it's, 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 it's very it's, obvious. It's very, very clear that Basco is very strong. Like, but, he's strong. I mean, but, he's... He's definitely the best bruiser right now, but I think like you come out, you knock ten percent off his passive, ten percent off of probably four of his abilities, and he'll be fine. I mean, they they seem to have yeah. messed up a little bit across the board. So like, I... Jesse also said like um, he changed like his Q and his alt or something like that like recently before like it was actually put onto the live part like the live client. Mm -hmm. So like. After this one week, if he gets good data on it and he's like, oh my god, look at this number that, like, his damage taken number compared to his deaths, oh my god, like, his damage taken number is extraordinarily high, but his deaths is extremely low. And if this is, like, really prevalent data, then obviously this guy is really strong. So, um, he, I'll, be, I'll be interested to see when they decide to go with the nerfs. I mean, they're not going to not nerf. Like, there's... Not since Moya has anybody been, you know, has it been so egregious that, like, there's daily threads about them. Okay. So I'm curious if it's they're going to wait the full three-week cycle. Moya's or, worse, I think. Or if they're going to come up with a uh, a patch uh, sooner, hopefully, rather than later. <laughs> it's yeah. like McScrag says. <laughs> McScrag's keeping that win rate low for us. <laughs> Thanks, Scrag. <laughs> I'm actually... I I'm actually doing the, you know, my one out of a hundred or one hundred out of a hundred games, and it's on Basco because I needed, I felt like I needed return to Bruisers, and I will agree that he is overtuned. Um, but I have been kited by a Kensu so damn hard. Oh, I have three gap closers. I'm no, doesn't even matter. I, I have been kited by a Desecrator, um, and. You know, I, I waited. I waited for those abilities to come out in order to use my gap closers, and it still didn't matter, guys. He's kiteable. He's definitely kiteable. Not only that, but a lot of the games that I've seen with Bascos, it's like, okay, each Basco runs to the enemy team's back line, and then each one just gets 4v1'd, and now we just have yes. a 4v4 team fight. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens in a lot of my games, I've noticed, too. That's what I've seen more than anything. So, I mean, mm -hmm. he certainly can get out of hand. But, I mean, every I've had... I've played against Mega Zero's Petrus a couple times over the past couple oh. days. And let me tell you, when Mega Zero's playing Petrus, I think Petrus is overpowered. Like, oh my, just... well, and and that's with four forms. That's yes, just that's with four forms, guys. That's it. Yeah. And he's overpowered. <laughs> like, so well, that's a th any bruiser who gets ahead like that. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Like, oh my God, he's 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 so he's so overpowered. But it's like, okay, well, oh look at that, he's seven and zero, oh, and 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 four levels above me, and all these other things happen. And yes, being yeah. overpowered, let him get to that point. But everything that happens in your game is a microcosm of that game. So, you know, he, he doesn't very, have a one hundred percent win rate. It's not that bad. There's also yeah. very, a very big misconception where like people come into this game thinking like, oh, I'm a carry, therefore I am a god. And therefore, I should be able to kill everybody no matter what. But in Dongate, that's not true at all. Because in the early mid-game, bruisers and tanks will destroy the crap out of you if you play very carelessly, like, yeah, no man. matter what. So like during the early mid-game, you have to be super wary and cautious about these bruisers that are coming at you and getting ready to literally bend you over. <laughs> and the, the people who whine the most are the 80 carries, although oh, like they right. have reason to. But the AD carries that fall behind in early phase, like they don't get their last hits, they don't accept, like they don't trade, they don't like do any of that harass. And then like 
a basco comes out and rapes them, and they're like, "Well, this game Direct sucks. Like, this it's game true. sucks. I hate this game. Why didn't you protect me?" I was like, "Why can't I kill this guy?" Like, come I, on, I, like, this is I, dying. I, I definitely agree with you. Like when I was doing some streaming yesterday, I'll like talk to the the ten people watching me, and I'll blink, <laughs> and I'll be like one in five. I was like, "Oh, oh, gotta pay a lot more <laughs> attention as an AD carry because like if anything looks at you, you are." dead and i mean that's that's the that's the thing about bruisers if something looks at you as a bruiser you can dash out you can you can make mistakes it's definitely a lot more forgiving to play a bruiser you're also in the jungle which means unless somebody is counter jungling which generally unless you're really good if you counter jungle the enemy team just kills you like i i don't ever see like for example when i lose five games in a row and i drop down to that silver mmr I, nobody's counter jungling if i'm jungling i'm afk i'm in the jungle i'm farming his 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 kit doesn't require a lot of skill to play. Uh, it's kind of one of the things we noticed on the first day. Like his skill floor is quite high, and like all that perfect storm scenario results in like an easy to play overtuned guy. Like he's de uh, there's no way he wasn't gonna come out of the gate. Like yeah, oh, he's, a he's the bronze bozos like dream. Right, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> But, um, I, I, I actually say that during my first game. My first time on it, I was like 8, 2, and 13, and I was like, I'm not even paying attention, guys, and I'm just getting kills. And it was it was mostly because he's a bruiser. <laughs> I Just the fact that he's a bruiser. So, it's a, it's um, I think it's important to note, you know, um, Battle in the Bot Lane happened this past Friday. And mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a unique thing, Battle in the Bot Lane, because it isolates a, t a 2v2 scenario without the influence of junglers or, you know, the rest of the, the game happening, basically. Um, but it was interesting to note that Basco, um, you know, he was... He was used a few times, and um, he wasn't nearly as oppressive or overpowering when he was in the lane and um, kind of... Uh, not yep. not having the the positional advantage or the level advantage of being in the jungle. Yeah, I think if jungle gets hit in the progression update, which I assume it will be, um, a lot of these bruisers that seem way over tuned right now are going to be pulled back in line, and a lot of those items will be pulled back in line. Um, I just don't know if the community is patient enough to wait for that situation. So if that ends up requiring them to nerf like all the tank items temporarily like I, I don't think that's such a bad idea um, just with the sort of caveat in mind that all these things are gonna have to be rebuffed again when the progression update is ready because right now it just seems like a lot of people are just really frustrated playing AD carry and having those nerfed prices and those nerfed items and like I mean it's well it, yeah that's 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 the other part of this whole Basco OP thing it's it's not Basco is over. There are lots of things kind of happening at once, which are, and it's like Spinal was talking about before about Battle in the Bot Lane. Basco doesn't, you know, Bas no one's crying Basco OP Gladiator. No one's crying Basco's OP as a tactician. I mean, yeah. he, this is pretty much Basco being like in, insanely influential when he's in the hunter role. So, mm -hmm. uh, to, to that point, it's almost like, you know, and now we're also seeing itemization changes with um, Rage. Uh, being changed this patch, aggr aggression seeing a price increase this patch. So but getting buffed too. But also getting buffed, yes. But but the, you know mm -hmm. you, you have a normal cadence when you do things if you've been playing it a certain way for a long time, and now you've messed up that cadence, and now here's this new shaper coming in and further messing up your cadence, and it's like the world is collapsing around you, and you don't understand why. But it's it's a combination of all of these things that are are creating this kind of perception where where people feel kind of helpless and no one likes to feel no. helpless and that's when people lash out and they're like I can't oh. do anything when I play ranged AD why do I play ranged AD all hail the bruiser gate there's you a, know there's I'm, a, a, I'm reminded of the chronicles today's chronicles <laughs> oh yeah how so spinal well, you know, a lot of these players you talk about feeling like the world's crashing down on them maybe maybe that little girl was a uh, was a visual representation of this week's um of, of the, the community salty community <laughs> 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 Get away from me! Don't touch me! Don't touch my AD carry! No, uh, you win! Uh, no, it's my so deeps! We need a, we need my a lane with Reyna more. Because lady with Arena is terrible. Reyna, Reyna will, will touch you and make you feel better. Yeah, I, but if she's I in the lane with me, I'm going to cry for the first seven <laughs> levels of my life. Dude, I love laning with Reyna. Um, I hate laning with Reyna. I just, I just feel like as soon as it's level 6, it's fucking kill time. And I but... feel like it takes 10 years to get to level 6. Eight minutes. <laughs> Reyna can do, and that's one thing. And 
Reyna actually uh, is a very good counter to Basco because she can do the repelling strike when he's in the middle of his jump and now he can't get to your back line. It's the same yeah. thing Rainy can do. You know, you can do that in the middle of Petrus's force wave when he comes running at you, you know, just, you know. Uh, that. Desecrator, King of Masks. Yeah. I've seen King of Masks absolutely shit all over um, Basco's all day long. I love playing Kong. I love well, that's, that's, that's the other thing, right? It's so it was... easy. Progression so, update comes out and these things get tuned again. Like, are you even ever going to want to play Basco against such a plethora of crowd control? Like, if all the supports can just make it so he'll never get to your back line, like, why why play him? Like, what's his usefulness? It's a, it's a tricky situation. Like, yeah. I can certainly see them put out a bunch of nerfs next week and nerf Hunter, and then suddenly Basco's like, eh, don't play him. He's unplayable. Like, mm -hmm. I, it, it, it might be that easy. Um... There's a novel in chat about eighty carry. That's a, it's a good point. I just kind of glanced at it. GLDR, please. Um, basically, <laughs> high level oh, gameplay ADC needs to be reevaluated because of uh, basically I, uh, you get punished more playing ranged AD. Yeah. Than I mean, it, anything it, else at the moment. It's punishing for sure. Um, yeah. Like yeah, but I, I've also been up against a bunch of uh, triple mage comps and they wreck face too. So it's you know. It, Give and take, I think. The the meta is flexible for a reason. Though you do need that physical damage represented in a game. I think that, you know, it's 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 flexible. You're going to get that kind of a thing where you're going to get the ebb and flow of power levels for different archetypes. I admittedly don't play a whole lot of carries. I generally don't go gladiator. I'm generally not that. That's just not my jam. So I, I can't speak to these sorts of things as well as some of you guys, other guys can. So I'll let you take... Like, what's it like to play... A squishy carry right now. It, it, does it feel rewarding to play ranged ADs for the people if the that are here? Jungle kills you two times. God bless your soul. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Um, um, I, I see a lot of carries first pick drain and then wonder why like they've died four times at level ten. Um, like you, I, I do feel like if you're going to be taking that gamble and playing that glass cannon rule, you need to be doing everything in your power to not die. Uh, you know that means defensive summoners. That means defensive positioning, and like you need to be like honed in and focused on your screen. Like it's not like League of Legends where you're laning against a underpowered support and a jungle who is a lower level than you. You're laning against bruisers who are higher level than you, and mages and are that designed are the same. To you anyways. Right. Like it. The the only the only caveat the only downfall that I do see for AD carry is it's just it's just harder to play. Like you gotta Certainly. love that. It's just harder. You have to love that role. Um, but it feels I, like crap when the jungle comes twice and you die. And you get tower dove and they don't die. And then you're like, okay. This is I, but at the same time, I mean, just speaking from my perspective, it feels pretty crap when I feel like I've done my job all game. Now we're at 55 minutes and I get shredded in three crits from Anissa, yeah. no matter how much armor I have. You know what I mean? Th that is the trade-off. That when you play ranged AD, you're, you can't expect to be strong the entire way through. Like, you know, right. well, well, what about the okay. rest of us then? Okay, you know, like, so... Okay, so the deal with ADK right now is early mid game, your number one role is to get the bindings. Mm -hmm. The number two role for you is to get every last hit and KS as much as you can. <laughs> and then late game, you can be a god and do whatever you want. Okay, for bruisers, your number one rule is to sit on the enemy AD carry and take a doo doo on their face. I like and doing that. And if you do it as hard as, like, as hard as you can and do it properly, they will never come back. If you close out the game theoretically correctly, right? Because at the same because you can tower dive that. them forever because armor items etc are extremely easy to work with. Right, and they well, don't like work double effective. The bruiser's job not only to do that is to strap your carry on their back. Be like, well, your carry doesn't have to worry yeah, because there's exactly. no threat to him because you're you're already pretty fed. And um, then, and then the biggest mistake I see is like, there's one team fight in the base. You're about to win the game as the bruiser. You're like, oh yeah, this is gonna win. A laser comes down onto your entire team, you'll die, and then their AD carry gets an Omni kill. They instantly go from level 15 to level 20, they gain a ton of gold, they become a god, and you don't realize that. And you revert to the same thing you always do, which is die with the AD carry, yeah. and then you lose the game. That's the biggest thing I see. So, like, you have to be respectful and look at their items all the time. Because, like, an AD carry can get lucky and get a bunch of kills and suddenly become super OP and broken. 
And that's yeah, what man. I mean. Like, that potential is always there. So why can't I have an equally yeah. – like, like, that's why I just think the advantage, it just happens – it just so happens because the bruisers and the tanks have that advantage early game. Not every game can get to late game, and that's where the discrepancy lies because they feel like mm -hmm. I, they never got to reach their max potential, whereas I got to, and I never got to feel that really shitty time, which is, for me, super late game, where yeah. it's – you know, so I, I see where that discrepancy lies. That does make sense. Yeah, I could definitely, I like – there, there's always a lot of hyperbole. People are like, 80 carry is useless now. Don't play 80 carry. Play four bruisers. Don't play 80 carry. They're, they're trash. When 80 carry gets ahead, like, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, so they're, easy. they're still, they're still strong. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, especially it all with, thing... when the team plays like around the 80 right. carry and feels for them and helps them out. Like, they're really strong. It's just, you have to get there. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people. I don't realize that AD. I think we we lived in a we live in a meta where like we expect AD carries and we like they they are a staple part of our MOBA diet. And mm -hmm. I think what Waste on Games is trying to do is make it so AD carries are not the rice and beans of our diet, but they are a choice we can make along with other choices. And I still think even now an AD carry, especially in the late game, which if you get there. Um, you know, they become the, the all-star of the team simply because of their scaling and um, rage. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget how strong AD carries actually are and that they have to have some weaknesses. Yep. Right, when, when an AD carry like Mikella, for example, is W critting you for like 13, 1400 damage. And you're on, the like, tank. A Through your order? <laughs> well, I, I, maybe not that high, but like for, for on a tank, maybe six I... or 700 at best. Like that's, that's my, way higher than a major. My damage. biggest problem with a lot of tank players or bruisers is like they go ham and then they go into the AD carry and then they keep going to the AD carry after they use their blink, after they use their escape, they keep going and then they die and they're like, uh, right. TF, team, yeah. what the hell? Why you no help? Could have killed AD yeah, carry. In, and, in like, and out. More in yeah. and out. That's the and it's point. like, yo, man, if he blinked, just peace out and go help your AD carry and win the team fight. Like, that was one of the huge things I actually saw. Uh, more so maybe in the spring split of the LCS and League of Legends, is like the tank's job was to go at the AD carry, up as close as possible, get to like this much life, and then go back, and then go back on the front line. And there's definitely a, a, a bruiser play style where you don't really think about much other than running in a straight line towards yeah. the AD carry. Yeah. And that goes, and that's that the goes back to what I'm talking mentality. about. Right, because Basco will do that and kill you if you're ahead or even with the AD carry. Uh, until late game, and like they don't, they don't flip that switch and be like, "Oh, eighty carries yeah. on six items now. It's time to turn around." You know. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I yeah. I do see a lot of chat as well. People saying that like the game is broken now. I don't think the game is broken. We're gonna see a tuning patch in like the next week or two. Like, it. I I I I don't feel like the game is unplayable, unwinnable. It feels a little different than before. Bruiser's still strong. Like, if Basco wasn't released this patch, like, I, I feel like the impact would be a lot worse. But Basco's so visceral that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people are complaining a lot. Yeah, it's like it's like we said, he's strong, but it's not like there's no kind yeah. of I mean, like, Mick Scrag and, and I have been kind of going back and forth here, and he, he does make a lot of good points. It, it does feel a certain way. The perception is that, like, they completely change so many things that it's throwing off the balance of the game but at the same time you know they seem to be balancing for the future and that's where we're going and that's the one that actually matters because this existence isn't going to be yeah. here not as we that. know it in the future however that being said he did make a pretty valid point too saying that well we're here now we're doing this we're playing this game we're taking our time to do all of this stuff what are we you know basically what are we doing here if it's this is not the game that we're going to be playing and the yeah. the answer is be patient this is beta and and like that seems like a cop-out but honestly i think that's the most solid answer anybody can give you uh this is an iterative beta and we're, we're there we're moving forward on the wave that they are pushing like it's it's up to them uh they have that big picture maybe they're not doing it the way that you want them to do it maybe they're not doing it the way that feels the best but um, they got us to this, you know, to right before the everything was broken. So why not trust them that uh, they're going to get us back there again and, and we're going to get there. I understand, though. Why would you mess it up if it was right? Why would you, you know, but well, I, I mean, we, let's, we can't not, know. let's not sugarcoat it. I mean, this this patch is a mistake. They, they right. OK, yeah, like this, okay. this patch my is not opinion, as good as it could be, but I don't think they've the game. 
and go, yeah. yeah, it might have been like at the competitive <laughs> level at the very top. I, can, I I'll say that I'll be cocky as as hell. I'm like one of the top tw top ten players. I don't know, but this patch Number fucked one. me don't over. Don't be humble, Tulsa. Like this just screwed me royally over, and like it's so bad in the fact that first ADCs already got screwed by Bruisers the patch before. Yep. So now they reduced the percentage pen on Rage, so it sucks more. Like okay, yeah, it helps the Bruisers. Because, like, you know, like, as you were saying, Twerp, like, when you go in, go in and you get three shot by AD carry, like, sure, yeah. that helps. But you're just pushing back the ADC and you're making that time for ADC to get big even longer. And it hurts them even more. So you shoot them in the foot. Right. But the point, but what I like about this patch is, like, they made mages better. Like, that divinity buff, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best items that I've seen, like, get changed. But I agree with Scrag in the fact that, like, if you're going to do this kind of patch change, why don't you just wait? There's, like, there's no reason to change it now. Like, I know you want to change it, and there's, like, a huge progression patch that's going to come, and that's huge. And that's similar to Item Palooza. But in my honest opinion, you could have tested that form was pretty broken, and hope was pretty broken for the Item Palooza change. You didn't have to wait for it to get the life patch. In my I, 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 don't, I don't think that they did wait for it. I think that they have a very small sample size with a varied amount of people uh, skill levels. And so it's not as easy to say, well, out of 100, this is what we found out, as opposed to out of 100,000. I don't know what the numbers really are. It's, but I, I, think, I think that out of all of the items, that massive change and map V2, balancing items to maps to shapers uh, all together in one big patch, it was a massive success that they were able to pull off with only two or three items really out of whack. And now we're seeing, um, you know, there's a lot of backlash, I think, uh, towards them, even though they did a great job. If you, if we, in hindsight, we think they did an amazing job. But at the time, everybody was just as form up gate, in arms. So gate, now, gate. People yeah, always yeah. focus on the things that are broken. Right, I mean, but, the key, the, but the, the key, point the is now, the point is now they're doing... They're doing what we expected them to do before, which was let's do it in small increments and not really mess things up. But right. it's happening every week that we're freaking out now instead of having a balanced game for a but long time was, and then one big change. But so what, no, what do you want? There's no, okay, you can do small increments, right? But yeah. you change accordingly to what's broken to fix for the present. You don't change what's, like, what's broken right now for the future that sure. isn't even the present, well, right? I, I, th I think it's unfair to say that they're not doing that because like right. last patch when they added mortal strike to shield they're like in our data we see sh these three shield based shapers being too strong so they okay. changed mortal strike nerf the shield shapers yeah. are strong buff them i think they just messed up this week i think this week's yeah. patch in particular was That's bad cool. if, it, if they did a good incremental update everyone would be like oh waystone you guys are just mm, mm. Exactly. like i love you but they, so... they they made a bit of a, a snafu. Hopefully, it's yeah. fixed by next week. But nah, that's my thought. That's what I'm saying. Right? I, in my opinion, I think Mina was released in a much more broken state than Basco. I think Basco's brokenness is a lot more visceral than Mina's, and so everybody feels it a whole lot more. Um, yes. But I saw. I, I, I think Mina was way more broken than Basco is. Mina on release was way more broken than Basco, and nobody complained about it just because of perception. Well, um, it I took a couple of Mina summer. also, Mina like made Ferris unbelievably strong, right. like Kindra yeah. unbelievably yeah. strong After at that, that time. Too. Like yeah, I feel like everyone looked unbelievably strong. Right. Mina Basco. was literally the counter to Brizzygate. Right, and Basco is just good, right? Like he, he makes everything. everybody across the board strong because he's a slightly above every other bruiser. Like, um, you know, just kind of situationally. Like, uh, I, I, I kind of agree with you spinal where like i think mina broke the game more but i i, I do feel like basket probably more broken by himself uh if that's a cop out or not he never alone right uh you you can imagine how many minas are alone and how juicy they are i know i was playing meridian <laughs> and i was like oh my god this mina is alone and i look at the mini map and i see two people at the top two people at the bottom and a mina in the parasite and i'm like Let's go. Mm -hmm. So free, so free. I, I know that feeling. Um, um, but I also want to say something else. I like. I feel like I'm ahead of the curve with you guys because I swear when when Gassy started talking about the progression, this was the first time he was on Money Picks. It was not last week's Money Picks. The week before, mm -hmm. I was getting all flustered, and I said, 
Gassy, I'm going to ask you a tough question. It's going to sound stupid or wrong or mean, but I'm going to ask it because I know I'm not the only person thinking it. Is the game going to be broken into this progression patch? Did he say no? Is that no? what you're saying? Did he, he say no? He said, he said no. I, I, I need to go back and look at it. I don't know his exact words, but basically he said, no, it's not going to be broken, and etc. And what he explains it much better than I could paraphrase him. Okay. But it's on. The, it's it's literally asking him that question. Are you, saying, I can, are you saying this game is going to be broken into the progression I can, patch? I can agree with you right now that I think the game will not be broken in the fact that you can play every role, no matter what you want. As long as you play that role good, you will be mm -hmm. okay. In that right. way, it's not broken. But in the very subtle like changes to it, it might be considered quote unquote broken. Although I don't like I don't like using the word broken or OP because I prefer having like my shape returns as like very strong, strong, and like average and then underpowered. I, I agree. I I, like, I think I, I think that Basco is, is strong but not broken. He's OP. He's overtuned but not broken. Right. Yeah, like right. Exactly. And Bro like, broken, I, I think the term broken applies to a mechanical um, kit that is unstoppable. Like, I can yes. teleport anywhere on the map whenever the hell I want. That's broken. The way that you fix it is you can you can oftentimes fix that with numbers. You can teleport anywhere you want around the map on a 120-second cooldown. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, suddenly that's not as broken. So you really do have to take into the fact that it's there's a mechanical and a, uh, a tuning difference between broken and overtuned. And I think that everyone right. resorts to the language of broken because Dude. they don't they don't care to make that distinction. The patch went live at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. At 11 a.m. in Scrag's chat, I fucking see like four or five well-known players being like, "This guy's fucking broken. This game's fucking awful." Like, <laughs> you're which like, which one of them was decade? Uh, okay, uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> which one of them? It's a good point. But like, um, I can't believe this went live. But like, obviously, you have to get a time. Like, what we can play in a single day is gonna be quantifiably huger than what Waystone can play in a month. Absolutely they, they, dwarfs it. They have it a absolutely job. They can't dwarfs it. play the game nonstop. They play what? Maybe one, two, three games a day. And they play on different to, versions too. In right, addition right. to their full time job. Like if this game was like not constantly iterating at like a release speed, I'd be like, okay, you guys how could this possibly have happened? But like yeah. uh, like League of Legends, Riot has though. has how many people work in the thousands? Thousands of people work on, on League of Legends and, and, and they still release things when it comes out that the community loses their mind. It's like, how could this come through uh, uh, in this state of balance where it's like, yeah, Waystone is working when with a fraction of that. And, and, the, and the things are coming out and they're having the same issues. So it's, the, I think that sort of thing is kind of like a larger issue. If you've ever been a part of a creative process, it is very hard to step back and separate yourself from that and be objective. If you've ever yes. done anything creative, you know how hard that is because when you finally do show your creative thing to other people, they point out things you never thought of that never crossed your mind. I mean, that's, that's part of the process of creating something. You constantly fine tune them, you go back and you adjust it and, you, and you, then you give out the next version of it. Like we're constantly going through that process so like to, to get on waystone for like this perceived basco is so out of control and you're killing all these other things like it's just it's like like have a modicum of patience for things and i know we live in an era where that's almost impossible yeah. but like try to take a deep breath once in a while and just I be like, like it, th they're not doing this to specifically drive you away from the game like this isn't the point like they're there they're in this to make money like <laughs> you know what i mean they're not trying to get rid of players they they're, they want a successful game so you know, let things give things a, uh, like a, a chance to breathe first before yeah. we. I just we... I, I want to tell you guys a story. I like there, stories. I, I don't know if I can tell this story. All I know <laughs> is that okay, I'll just tell it in general terms because I I don't want to get in trouble. But <laughs> there are other video games out there by other with other people and other publishers, and they will go many many months with game breaking bugs. And the community will complain and rail and complain and rail and it will go months and months and months and months and no change will happen. No change will happen. If you guys compare like um, – if you compare Dongate to almost the vast majority of other <laughs> online games out there, we have it We have it like super duper nice. And yeah. so sometimes I, – and I know you guys know that deep in the back of your minds but sometimes I feel like we, we get – 
we get just so stuck in like a small per perspective just like we're looking at the minute details and we like want an instant response like i see basco's overpowered i want him nerf this second like right wait yeah. a minute like, well, like, our perception might be a little skewed we we might well, be asking a little much i don't know up to you go your ahead your perception's always subjective but like even for example there's been a lot of weeks where like dibs will be idling in chat and be like oh that bug you just said right now here right, i, I right. fixed it he's done it that for me it doesn't Multiple mean the patch yeah. is coming out tomorrow. Yeah, but that's awesome that out. that happens. Oh, I know, sure. it was amazing. And it is <laughs> cool. Like... But, like, people need to understand, like, they're not they're not just going to go and release a patch the next day. Building yep. a patch is not like this, oh, patch, done. Like, you know, it, the here, people that... Here's the biggest thing. I think that people are going to think that we're just white knighting for them because we do love their game and we're putting on a podcast for them. But I think we're also incredibly... Yeah, we're also incredibly critical at the same time. I just think that some of us, um, not just us here on the show, but some of us in the Dongate community are, and, and I'd like to count myself amongst them, uh, are a bit more patient and um, and tolerant of the, the fact that this is an iterative beta and we're not in a live game. This is not a released game. This isn't affecting like, LCS on Friday. Like, no, no one's losing yeah, money because right, the game is you know, broken. Like, no one's money but again, if we pick Kong, but, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, what I said to Mick Scrag in chat was, you know, I, I'm not a competitive player. I don't live in a competitive environment. I, I'm only competitive with myself, really trying to get better. So maybe that environment, the competitive environment on a game that isn't finished, isn't appropriate. Maybe um, well, you guys have to just not be as knee-jerk reaction to things maybe like, maybe that's where it belongs well, you have to be you have to be critical but fair like I, yeah yes. yeah i'm flat out saying they they fucked this patch was not a good patch no like, this is not basco, this is not the golden age same with John. I, like the basco came mm -hmm. out over tuned 80 mm -hmm. carries feel weak uh, there are so many bugs there was a lot of bugs amaranth Amaranth's E was like firing off like double damage. Double damage. Yeah. That's and any AOE that out. overlaps each other has a chance to cancel out, which is how the calm bug happens. Yeah. Right. You can There's Tetsu a... alt, and Mara will shoot her E, and the guy will get feared, but there will it be slows. no path. I, I, I was, right. Waystone Dibs was talking to me about it the other day. Any slow that happens uh, while King of Masks is like doing his ult, like it just makes the ult disappear. Something yeah, which like is like why Tom can do to himself with his ultimate, because when he uh, casts it, it's slow. When the when the cage is on the floor, people are slowed. So there's like a chance for the second animation portion to be fizzled out. And then I was like, "Holy crap! DGSL coming out! Oh my <laughs> god! Can't pick Tom anymore. GG." But I still pick Tom. They even matter. Right. I mean, and you just gotta be reasonable, man. You gotta report the bugs. Like, yeah. wait for them to get fixed. Like, whining about it nonstop is just like not a solution. Exactly. Like, um, and I, I just, and I don't have patience for people who get all uppity and accusatory, like, like, oh, how did this get through QA? You guys must have been, like, on vacation. Like, I mean, I'll, they're doing their jobs, man. It's, like, it's really rude. It reminds me of, like, shit my mom does where she, like, berate fast food workers and stuff. It's, like, they're not sitting here trying to fuck it up on purpose, man. Like, mistakes happen. Um, yeah. I just, I don't like that overly hostile, aggressive, like entitled whining it just drives me nuts so like just yeah. my, my just plea because, is to grow up yeah just because you're like a high rated player doesn't mean you have the right to tell another person how to do their job right, right and you Damn. can explain why th you can explain why things are broken and like again like those bugs suck and really like i mean they dropped the ball the mistake was made but like yeah. you know, let's just hope they fix it that's all yeah. that's my like that's i stream a lot and i and i played a bunch of broken shapers like calm and whenever I my bug like I got bugged out, I just made a highlight of it and then sent it into waste on like big whoop. Just just learn how to play around the bug. Like that's how I'm an play. exemplary how, beta tester. That's how I get the high elo. If I find a bug, I'll exploit it, get free <laughs> elo, get to the top. If the bug is affecting my gameplay, I'll change how I play so I don't get affected by the bug. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point we're, we're not all it? we're not all that perceptive <laughs> or adaptive i suppose I mean, but yeah you know, yeah that one makes of the sense. things it comes down to too is they gotta they gotta take note of why these things happen and add it to their testing and quality control purposes as well because if this patch came out like on live i mean it's happened in league of legends there's been things that have been just so broke but like it's a it's a tragic mistake so hopefully they can you know roll these kind of mistakes learn from them and make sure they don't happen again especially when when we go live all right well that was good that was that felt very cathartic
I feel very <laughs> cleansed now, like like peaceful energy now for everyone in the community. Can we all we all had our moment? We we've uh-huh. we've spent a couple days, you know, we've been getting this think, out. We've been very very calm. I think out of anywhere. I think out of anywhere this is a great place to do that. Please, uh, yeah, let then, this be the and then we just kind of like chill out after. Like you hash it out, like you and your bros. Like you just like, nah, bro. Like I told you to clean the dishes, and you guys like scrap for a little bit, and then you're just like, you know, man. Like I'm really sorry, but like it really pisses me off when you say you're gonna clean the dishes, and then you nerf Basco. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah. But, okay. but, <laughs> anyway, they, they, I I really hope they don't wait three weeks to fix the the glaring bugs and rebalance Basco. Like, uh, I would I hope by next Monday, like we see like a two week content patch. Like I. I'm not. I'm not saying it's got to be out this week. Like I, I'm okay if they want to take the week and do the shit. But like by Monday, I'd like to see it patched. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Just final I'd thoughts like, on what, like how do we how do we fix Basco just for the way the game is right now. I'm saying tune his passive to be more specific to the stat and and scale it accordingly and, and yeah. make it so his W doesn't make him invincible in the jungle. Find a way to do that with numbers. I'm not a math guy. That's what I say. <laughs> right. Fair Everything enough. else is fine. Sure. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see less. carries so everyone right stops whining. Yeah. <laughs> well, AD I, carry I, should have a Q spell that does one thousand damage at level one. <laughs> um, I'm am curious to see. Um, I mean, other than Basco and Bruisers, they did nerf a lot of champions last week or shapers last week. I'd like to uh, maybe the data is useless, but I'd like to see how those fared too. I like Amina like nerf, but right. I think she could get more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not. I feel like I feel like she still wrecks team fights. <laughs> she wrecks. She wrecks. That's her job, though. I think. I think she's in a good place. Though. I don't know. I think. I think to really know, there needs to be people actually can play her now in competitive. Maybe we could actually still find out. 100%. Well, what if what if you kept all of the exact same ratios and stuff like that? You just increase some of her cooldowns a tiny bit. No. Mm. What matters I, is you do it I once, prefer, and they get I screwed. prefer damage nerfs over. Um, Cooldown nerfs because they're more yeah. visceral. Um, like I, I want, I want to take less damage. Like and, damage and over per minute is is an irrelevant stat to me. And a lot of dumb really? cooldowns they don't really matter because so many haste items get built, and then the right. CDRs all get skewed. Yeah. And then yeah. what they like the main CDR nerf happens in the early game, and once they get those haste items, it really doesn't even matter. Tulsa, mm-hmm. what do you think about uh, Viridian? That's how you playing him today. I love playing Viridian. He's I so fun. Him. You're playing yeah. him DPS, right? No, uh, semi. You were still because. building a tank when I watched you today. I get I get prosperity in the conquest in opponency and in that mid game, like that mid game moment, I can delete any squishy target that I want to delete, and then I get like valor if the enemy mage is like super strong, or I get like other items depending. So like I have a core that I stick to, and the last few items always change. If I'm super ahead, I pick up a dominance and hope that I yolo crit the AD carry mm-hmm. for like one k damage off of a W conquest hit. Yeah, but it just depends. I think so, so prosperity, biggest, huh? Prosperity is broken. Super broken, broken or overtuned? Super broken. It's <laughs> it, it really is, is the ideal is, tank item. I mean, not even broken, just tank item. It's broken because it fixes every ranged shaper's base stats. Because <laughs> bruisers have insane base stats. And uh, the the outplay potential against uh, squishy supports is that you can abuse that their base armor is really really bad and their MR is really bad. But once they pick up a prosperity, you they, can't you can, them anymore. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want. You can flaunt your ass in their face and it won't even matter. And then you just get up all in their grill and you just proceed to destroy them. Yeah, I I I, I think it's, it just agree. costs too little. I I. I, we were talking a bit before the show, and you mentioned that prosperity is better than devotion. I have a slight disagreement there, but I feel like I'd rather have just have both. Like I, I want yeah. <laughs> somebody, yeah, get both. somebody on my team needs to have devotion because yeah, I agree. it's it's just it's it's, it's the good. equalizer. It's like the it's a thing you don't notice, but like your team doesn't get one shot, your carry beside you doesn't get one shot. Everybody's a little stronger, and that that goes a long way. Um, I mean, and then statistically, it's got like what, like 130 armor, 100 magic resist. Like it's it's got a lot of stats. Um, but I can certainly, I certainly agree with you with the prosperity. Yeah. I think making, pros- making well, making making carries feel strong enough to not get one shot. 
So, I think prosperity but, is wickedly strong, but you got to think about a couple things. You're you're giving up. It costs a it costs a high amount of vim. What does it cost? Does no, it cost, it costs like, lower com in comparison to other early items that you need to list. Does it cost? It costs three thousand six hundred. Yeah, but it's the best use. Two thousand six hundred. Yes. Okay, that's that's kind of cheap actually. But <laughs> what you have to remember is that when you buy prosperity, is you are giving up any sort of. Ability to help in others. Bruiser Gate, team. The longer I live against the Bruisers, the more prosperous my team is. The Vigor's more prosperity you have, the more you prosper. Item too, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, Vigor is a great item to get because you A, don't get one shot. Really easy access to health. It only and costs then, 500. And then it, it helps your bro do bro things, like heals him and stuff. Like, that's cool. Vigor or, or purity? Uh, uh, prosperity from me. Vigor. Oh shit! You're right. Vigor's the one that heals you. Whatever. Yeah. The red one. Fuck that. It's it's They're good. They're both red. The red one. They're good. I mean, they it costs heals twenty eight seventy. Okay. okay, it's closer it's to three thousand. It probably should. It probably could be bumped up to three thousand. I think it should be three thousand. Yeah. At yeah. least uh -huh. three thousand. It probably. If I was, if I was will tuning be. this game, if I was tuning this game, I would make it three thousand two hundred. You know why? Because tacticians don't make a lot of money, so getting an item that gives you free stats over time is huge for them. But they do get a lot of money. Not as much as Gladiators. Well, I mean, tacticians... Is if they're Renzo or not. Tacticians aren't money, allowed to farm, else does. so... I, I do think the biggest difference between Gladiator and Tactician is, like, you'll send a Gladiator to go farm a Crave, a, a crave of Weeps, a, a Wave of Creeps, you'll <laughs> never send a Tactician over there, and that's, like, one of the biggest reasons why Tacticians seemingly are always 2k bin behind the Gladiator. Like, they, they never have that position, like... If I go over to that creep wave, that gladi that tactician has no opportunity to proc their passive, and that's why yeah. they're always behind. Like yeah. I, I wish tacticians could do more to to stay ahead in gold or vim, because like when I play tactician, I rarely even try to build damage. I build like grace and harmony and uh, influence. Like even on my Ash Bell, like I just go max haze, max utility, because I just don't feel like I've got the vim to to be yeah, a exactly. That's how I made this stupid calm build. I got like prosperity, so my calm would never die, and I picked up the the rest. Dude, I saw them. someone doing that build, and I was like, "This is dumb." And I was like, "Well, I died to dress, so I guess it wasn't that dumb." Right. Like, the, th the thing about it is, like, if you're calm, you W four to eighty k, and yeah. you auto attack them. Then if they don't true. pop the spell, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, that's all there is to it. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you gotta something somebody could do is block the the incoming root queue. Yeah, when his allies was f you, bro. We'll come back for you. I feel like a lot of like not if he's a bruiser. I feel like a lot of late game team fights is like if you don't pull the trigger first and they do, you lose the team dude, fight. I love that's why I win all my team fights. Pull the trigger, yeah, exactly, dude. Cerulean's like, hey, that's we why, win now. That's why I'm playing tactician now on my team. <laughs> Initiate but, uh, all the bumps, tower dives. Hell yeah, man! Tell Make those calls. Team. That's why I play Zip. Oh. <laughs> Tell us for your team. What are your What are your go to three tacticians? Right now in the meta. Spoil yeah. all of your team comps right now. Mina. Uh, Mina, 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 Mina. If we can get Mina, we'll definitely get Mina. No okay, Mina's banned. And let's say it's solo queue. I don't want to ruin your team. Uh, you're playing tactician in solo queue. I yeah. pick Reina. Wait, 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 wait. No. Dude, you don't I'll... like Reina? No, I hate her. Oh. I think she's trash. Did that ult though. She's Who cares about the ult? I'll do the same thing with my calm ult and instead pull everyone in and then fear all of them. Yeah, but you can't pull that trigger. Not with calm. I said, dude, dude have you seen me play calm? I throw my ult out first. That's fair. That's fair. I don't max Q, I max X. Hmm. Interesting. X give, X give more CC and they do hmm. more AoE damage, especially if you combo well off of your ultimate. Yeah, it's like more guaranteed because creep can't stop it. Yeah, and it does AOE splash damage too. So you can hit it on a mm -hmm. creep and it'll proc onto the enemy shaper if they're close enough. So right. you don't rush potency then on King of Mass? Nope, I hate potency. <laughs> See, I heard on your stream today that like you're, you're a big fan of King of Mass that do that, no? No. Not true? Not John true? is fucking right. showing the crap out of me right now because I, yeah. I was bitching so hard <laughs> on my comm to build a potency first and <laughs> deal zero damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I do like uh, I do like the idea of building supports as tanks. Like I know Spinal, you've been doing Zeri shenanigans with 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 tank, right? Like I'm not crazy. He's like, like I don't know what you're talking about. When Item Palooza first came out. That's the first thing I said. I was like, if my AD carry is full damage and I'm feeling lazy, I'll build full tank Zeri and put my W on them and AFK. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Maybe that was AFK. Doing you that. know what's even better, Ron? You're... <laughs> Every time I play Zeri, sure. people say Basco OP because you can't kill Basco when he has an extra 60, 70, 80 yeah. arm, 40 magic resist. Zeri ult. Mm -hmm. Dude, yep. I, I really Stop like uh, Viana's synergy too with um, Basco. Like, just healing a Juggernaut feels kind of neat. Like, just being able to give them all those health. I saw a lot of 2v2 duels where, like, there was no chance. Like, I was not dying. Not unless you got that super early pain mm -hmm. or uh, corruption. I've been a lot over pain. Yeah, corruption is good. A lot. Do you guys feel betrayed by Waystone since they didn't put an advanced tier Mortal Strike item in the game like they said they would? I, I do a little bit. I, 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 when I was doing my 100 Freya games and I was well, like, okay, I need Mortal stuff. Strike, I would just rush uh, c uh, Corruption, but even that at 2300 or something like that still felt really... And it's going to be 3000, right? We it's know going that, to be, yeah. Yeah, like, could you imagine having to spend 3000 Vim on Mortal Strike without uh, what do you, a drain? Like, that's... Uh, that's I don't know. That, that's kind of why I don't really like the standardization of item prices because I like getting I like cheap options for tier three. Like I like upgrading my order for eight hundred Vim and not having mm -hmm. to save up eighteen sixty for the tier three that's like, prosperity is, you know what I mean? Uh I, I like that that gives you options. So I, I'm not a, like a giant fan <laughs> about the whole every tier two item costs fifteen hundred now and every tier three is going to cost 3k yeah. or whatever it's going to be like because then i feel like you're going to have to balance things around that price and something like could you imagine order the amount of stats it would have to give to to equal 3k <laughs> you're gonna to have to get 30%. 500 armor well, on like, this friggin' thing you're assuming that all they're going to do is up the stats well, That's how else are they going to explain? They can change. They can change order. They, change, they can change the passive. They can change, they change the, the passive on order. Eighty carries will try even more. Yeah, good. So Eighty, 80 carries are just. But you can't justify a twelve hundred vim increase in in the recipe cost or whatever it's it costs. It's a thousand ish. All right, well, whatever it, it is. Yeah, that's a lot. But it's still like it without drastic. Like, that's a lot of vim. You know, if you're gonna balance right. the item around the vim it costs, you're gonna. That's just right. great. You know, crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I, I actually change I, really I enjoy the 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 standardization because it, it's like there's no more trying to bookkeep, you know, no more trying to remember these things. And it's just I mean, not that I didn't remember them, but now I, I honestly I feel like I focus on objectives so much more uh, for when I'm trying to go for a fifteen hundred you know item. I'm like, OK, I got to I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, is a good speed. price for legendary upgrades. Like the items that have been reduced in price, I feel really good about. Not ha like I really want. It's either dominance or divinity. One of them still thirty two something, oh, which nice. makes dominance is thirty five, right? And that yes. sucks for eighty carries. Like why can't I get my infinity and edge? Then rage went up. And right. That sucks for 80 carries. right. I really and, would. And, like okay, you know what? The only thing eighty carries have going for them, they up the price on desire, right? But yeah. the ambition price is still the same. So like, what the f what? <laughs> Yeah, no no sense. that's why I don't understand the price changes. Why, why doing the price changes in chunks like this doesn't really make sense. Well, they yeah. need to do it right. That's a mistake. I, mean, what? I get it because second, wait, losers were getting desired, but we need it too as carries, right? But what what, what reason was there to get... Con uh, we're talking about desire and the other one's called consumption, right? The advanced tier life yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was no reason to get, like, in 80 carry lane, if you were against anything that dealt physical damage, there was no reason to get consumption. You were gimping your early game in exchange for a better late game, potentially better. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now it's, it's not... an actual choice. Like, okay, it's not instantly just the best thing to just rush an ambition. Right. Um... So key. Yeah, I mean, I, I still I agree. prefer That's getting desire, but... It's it's a good point. I mean that that spike you're getting two minutes later, and that's not having that power is enough to to make you feel weak. Um, I, one of the biggest problems in the game right now is there is nothing you can buy with 1200 vim anymore. Like you go back to shop and you look at that 1500. You buy two basic items. Um, Three. Right, but the basic items. Actually, like let's say two. let's say you're an 80 carry and you're like, mm, I need some life steal. Getting a hunger. At like level eight or nine isn't that great. Um, you know, you you, you don't have the percentage life oh, leech, gotta, right? Gotta like, run that loadout, man. That's dude, right. I that life I, steal. I, I, I run a basic loadout and I run a warden loadout that literally had whatever stones I had in my inventory when I um, unlocked it on like thirty wins, right? Like, I I like the loadout system, but I I I don't like playing with it because I'm super lazy. Um, so like. 
it, it, if the game is really hard to play without that stone, that that sucks. So, I, which I guess kind of brings me to my next point. Like, I wish, similar to like what Torp was saying, having, you know, the price points revolving around three thousand, not having access to, say, orders effect or mortal strikes effect or percentage life drain or even percentage penetration until you hit a legendary item. Uh, that's that's the worst part about the three thousand point, uh, three thousand vim price point for me. Like you're forced to farm that exact price point, and there's no earlier options to yeah. to to even get a portion of that legendary thing. And a big problem is like if you really want to team fight well, you have to wait for like those spikes in items. Right. And if you delay those spikes in items, it really really sucks, especially when you're slightly behind because the enemy team capitalizes so easily in Dungate. There's like another big. Cur- a like critical factor I don't like about Dange is that it's so hard to come back once you lose two yes. towers. It is absolutely hard as hell. Back in yeah. general. It's a yeah, there's no comeback team. mechanic. Like in League and Dota, you can split push like red boys for life. And you red them out. And you split push and you AFK. And in 40 minutes later, you're better than them because you have a better skilling team and you dumpster them. Or like you stack ancients in Dota. Like that's really effective. Right. But in Dange, it's like, yeah, like if you're a jungler in Dange and you screw up early game, and you lose both tier one towers, you lose both sides of the jungle. Like your armor buff and your power buff might be gone for the rest of the game. See ya. Mm-hmm. Well, you your can, only you hope can take is to steal one while they take the other and then steal theirs. Yeah, and what and the problem is when you steal their parasite, they're like lol lol, lol let's farm the straighters. Well, yeah, that's a, that's something that's been coming up in, in, in recent weeks. It's that I've noticed, like, I was playing a game the other day. We got, like, a really good early kill, and I, like, ping Parasite, and someone better than me was like, no, 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 don't do Parasite at Tier 1. And I'm like, how come? And he's like, they're just going to farm Striders. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, oh, that actually makes sense, and I don't want to I don't yeah, want to yeah. get Parasite anymore. That's well, something like that it, needs... It does and it doesn't. What do you guys but think I'll, about I'll that? You do you, is first. it make sense, Tulsa, you know, the guys who are... The high level player. Right. What do, do high level players? Are you going right. for? Generally, do you generally ignore parasite we, unless it's tier we three ignore now. Ignore it. We ignore it because if it's solo queue, there's a very big chance you can't capitalize off of the striders because right. it's early game. Uh, second of all, you get a, you get like what 150 gold 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 for that. Vim, and, yeah, yeah, and but you're giving them literally you're giving them one and a half levels in strider XP. And right, but that's that spread out. That's spread out. Like that's like the parasite yeah. gives you global vim to your entire team. Whereas if you wanted to give somebody one and a half levels, they would have to kill every single parasite. Like we yeah. did that math, and yeah. that's not possible. Not you're not going to be running back and forth between each of the lanes to get your eighty carry all of the the parasites. I don't need the, to. I, I think I think the thing two. that really what's that? I can split it two and two. Sure, but but uh, I think the thing that really really screws things up is the fact that uh, you don't get a buff. <laughs> Uh, on tier one parasite so you don't yep. have the ability to actually to capitalize on the push because then you're just pushing with these big minions but they ignore the minions and kill you while you're trying to take the binding and you just get pushed away anyway then they kill the 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 strider and the striders get yep. distracted very easily by a single minion so they're not yeah. actually pushing anymore they're just killing the minion the yeah, binding's they, killing them it, it just doesn't work without you being able to actually take advantage of it yeah. and it's hard because uh, even if you take tier one turrets, you don't even have enough income to get items that make it a very, very big difference. It's still a very small difference. Like in mm-hmm. gold, your prob- your team is probably like two k, three k ahead in vim against the other team. But the longer it takes for you to pull the trigger to do something amazing with your team and the striders, mm-hmm. the more even it gets the more for them. The gap closes. Yeah. Exactly. And when that gap is too close, and you try to pull the trigger, there's it's a very big bam. chance that you'll screw up, especially if they're turtling on the binding. Because yeah, like they should do, yeah, and they will because of the striders. Yeah, and it's natural for them to get pushed into. Tier mm-hmm. right. one para should probably just not give striders. It should just work like dragon and law. It's like, look, my team just got a nice solid one k vim for free, plus like the scaling level stuff. Like, okay, I good. love that idea. Um, yeah. the the yes. problem is it's half a basic item, which means like Tulsa or or uh, Spinal, one of you guys just said, you know, it's it's not a big enough spike that you can. Pl- um, you know, change the game, but having Parasite down is a game changer. Your team needs to group up, get together, and start taking objectives. Like, if you're using lane, it just for the Vim, you're not using it properly. Right. right. If, Here's if, the problem, right? Spirit Balls open at 15 minutes, so yep. if you kill the par- Parasite, it's before 15 minutes, so Spirit Balls aren't even open. Okay, get right. Spirit Balls. Uh, so Spirit Balls, the most you can do is really only just harass 
off of them. But the other team doesn't really care. And if you're doing that as five people, uh, chances are the bot lane and the jungler. Someone's free farming. Just the bot lane. Yeah, the bot lane can be free farm. Scrape makes a good point. point. You know, we talk about how the game is too snowbally already. Making tier one parasite not spawn tier one parasite not spawn striders would make it more snowbally. Like it's basically it's if your jungler wins the first gank, gets a double kill in the lane. Next well, game, at, please. It is yeah, a good as, point as, because as, people can sorry, people can solo parasite. Um, that's what I was just gonna say. If, yeah. if there's not a ward on it, so that's that's yep. a good that's point. Nice. Like I mean I. I you can even solo tier 3 Parasite, but there's always a ward on it because it actually has value at tier 3. What, what yeah. if you just buff the base values on the tier 1 Parasite? Then I, no I, one don't think, I don't it. think it matters think because definitely. you can still they still get distracted by a single creep. They don't actually... They push the creep, but they don't actually oh, focus the binding. They, I feel they like they so that they can't solo it, or even if they pick up a double kill top lane, you can still contest hard enough as a 3v5 with poke. Well, on the, the why, why even? I mean, well, okay, this is gonna How sound many times crazy, but just, just a, gone wrong. yeah. That, well, this is what <laughs> I was gonna say. This, this sounds a little crazy, but why not have the parasite always visible? Is, is there a reason that we have to waste a word on that? Is there a reason because at all? I I, I, I off so much jungle. Pressure. I just want to see. I just I'm playing devil's advocate here. I just want to see what you guys think. It's, it's the middle of the map is open. Yeah. First of all, rotations are destroyed. Mm -hmm. If you yep. rotate from top to bottom. All of that is destroyed. Jungle, the finicky jungle routes that people take in solo right. queue destroyed. all get destroyed as well. Right, right, Literally, but, but can... that's that's not that's the full area. I'm saying parasite, just parasite Par always parasite visible. Parasite is the full area. Yeah, though, he's in the middle. No, no, if... I'm saying just parasite is always visible regardless of there being a ward on it. What is the point to not even? I mean, is there even a point to not being able to do I, that? I, I, I feel think... like that's harmful for newer players yeah. because if they okay. don't even path correctly and they path through the parasite, they're gonna path right next to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, nope. I, I just think there is value. I mean, map control is an important concept yeah. of MOPAs. Focus. And sure. I mean, I, I, I would love to see ideas like having Zelnaga watchtowers and stuff in this game. Like having the ability to control areas of map for vision, sure. But just having the whole thing always visible, just kind of... Well, what if it wasn't visible until someone started attacking it? I mean, I, I, I could certainly so see... Many... There's so what many mind games you can do when they don't yeah. have vision. Yeah, right. game, no, 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 yeah, I, I don't... I just don't think it'd be an improvement to the game. No, nah, yes. I don't think so I, I agree. Sneaking Parasite can be very fun. I've done it a lot, and it's very fun. I'm just I'm just checking to see if that was, like, an idea that anyone had ever considered. But I, I agree with the whole rotation thing. It would completely mess up, because that is a central location for pathing. And yeah. not, not knowing where the enemy team put wards, even though there's almost always a ward on there, um, yeah, it, it's... Yeah, it, it wouldn't work as well, I guess. Um, I mean, another well, a couple other options I've thought about is, like, killing Parasite would give your team the ability to unleash Striders, but maybe you don't have to use it right away. I well, mean, like, I, what if Striders came at a regular interval with not so many Striders? The old yeah. way? They literally become Siege Minions in Maul or something. The, like and the old you... way, Tulls, right? Yeah. <laughs> not like um, every single way has a freaking Strider. But... The other I just, thing, yeah. pushing the game in the wrong direction, yeah. pushing it towards more snowbally. Because well, they, they, that was the more... issue beforehand when they spawned every wave, and it was the same thing. It was like we can't push just because. Well, I was the thing though. Their progression was tied into the bindings you destroyed, and that was yeah. the thing you could never come back because even if you want a team fight, well, guess what? Both of your lanes are pushed. You can't pressure because Striders. So that well, was. I also... If, I also if, think um, that it poses that that uh, or it creates that same thing that you know a lot of us don't like is that selfishness in lanes. Oh, there's a Strider every th third wave. Sorry, I have to be here. I can't come help you. That this is this right. Strider's on the line. The Strider's on the line. I have to get this Vim. I, I greatly dislike that. So uh, I, I don't really like it at every wave. Well, I or mean, the, wave, the, for me, it's all about opportunity cost. If you want to stay in lane um, and farm those Striders, you're giving up a weakness to your team. But uh, I forget yes, which one true, you guys mentioned it. The Elo, everyone will stay in lane, is my point. Right. I, I don't want to encourage that. I right. wouldn't want it, to encourage that. Well, that, that brings me to two points. One, somebody said earlier, spirit walls aren't unlocked, which means the major objectives of the map aren't there anymore. They're just the towers, really. Like, counter-jungling yeah. happens once every five minutes. Like, 
just taking Parasite to do that isn't isn't big enough deal. But I did see somebody in chat say, oh, you know, if you make level one Para stronger, it'll make the game snowball better or or more hard. And I'm I'm actually okay with the game snowballing harder if your team is grouping up and taking objectives and doing things. What right now I the snowball that. that I don't like is you get a kill and now you're a level two levels higher. You have the vim and you can't lane anymore. Like snowball yeah. laning sucks. It feels bad. But if the enemy team is like doing their part and roaming and ganking and like taking objectives and and they close the game out in 22 minutes, good, good for them. Like, yeah, I, I feel I, like if like if the jungle ganks top lane and they come out with a clean gank, they take no damage and both of you die, you guys deserve to lose the game. <laughs> hey, you screwed up. No, you're right, Tol. And you, it yeah, sucks. You, like, you know, you, you, a lot of times people just have this mentality where it's like they expect to win every game. They expect yeah. every time they click solo <laughs> queue, it's piece. it's I'm gonna win. And and like that doesn't happen in anything ever. But I don't know what it is about MOBAs in general. I guess because you just have... T it's it's the one arena where you get teammates, but you don't know them. You you wouldn't go and play pickup basketball in the park and like get five, four other random bozos to play five on five against five other people who are also <laughs> strangers. Like it's just it's just such an absurd setting. So it's like you, you get into the game and and like when something like that happens and you get clean swept by a jungle gank and you just want to blame everybody else. Like no, the onus yeah. is on you too, man. You were there. You were a part of it. <laughs> yeah. So I think like if you screw up and they get the objective. That's fine to get an objective, but just don't make the gold rewarded on it super high that it makes a significant difference right. in the very I, short time span. I, I want to see that successful gank open up the opportunity for them to continue to play well, get Parasite, snowball that into maybe a buff steal, snowball yeah, that into a I spirit think. well. I, I don't want to see that double kill and being like, well, that lane's over. <laughs> Sucks to be you guys. Because uh, if the enemy yeah. team doesn't do anything to capitalize on that Vim, I honestly, like, I don't even want there to be an advantage there. Like, okay, congratulations, you killed me. That's good. I'm proud of you. You can get, like, a small advantage. But, like, I, 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 I want it to stay competitive. Like, I want the next time you make a mistake to mean you die. Um, obviously, MOBAs are designed such that you have a Vim and gold ad item advantage from that double kill. I just, just make sure it's not too big. Uh, yeah, unless they go and do something else really good. Um, I, I think... I think... Yeah, Lane, the laning phase is much more forgiving in this game than in League of Legends. If you walk into a lane in League of Legends and you get ganked by a jungler, and then your jungler comes and dies to their to their solo laner, it's over. You can no longer lane. I played I played mid, and when my jungler gave the other mid laner double buff, I literally AFK at my turn. Oh, right. that was the twerp it was special. the worst thing ever. That was the well, it's I was like, oh, let's see what shape, what champion I'm playing. Oh, I'm playing Karthus. Who am I against? Oh, I'm against the Twisted Fate. Or phase with double buff. Uh, let me just cue this wave. Well, that's, <laughs> that's one of that's one of the elegant things about Dongate. When you don't have solo lanes, it's hard to be hard countered. And yeah, right. getting one death doesn't hard counter you, unless you're yeah, maybe you in a mirror deaths, lane. You could still come right. back from it. it uh, yeah, but pre five minutes, I don't know about that. That that can be that can be the pain. Well, the the big thing too is if you die before level six, you're now level three or four when the enemy jumps right. level seven. <laughs> but after that, it's okay to die. Like it really yeah. it. Um, it, it keeps it fairly well balanced, but before that, that's the, the snowballing. Not to you don't want to die when you have like two or three creep waves at your back. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, the best, right. The but that's like the only time. Otherwise, pushed waves don't matter in this game compared to the way that they do in League. Yeah, nobody uh, freezes. I, I I rarely see people really uh, like freezing yeah. lane. Yeah, like the I am same perfectly way. confident. Uh, I'm in. I am perfectly confident in my top lane or whatever lane I pushing lane so much. pushing as hard as I can to the binding and then ganking the other lane and not caring that the top lane is going to get creep because you are going to roam to the next lane and get a kill like i i just i don't think it's as important because of the distance between bindings i mean sure freeze to get it and stuff like that but there are times when it just does not matter how pushed they are or if they're not pushed you're like oh that's cool let's go gank real quick we'll come back the tower will have taken care of most of it because yeah. our creep wave got there and they just they focus on each other they don't focus on the binding until all the creep are gone and so nothing yeah. happens Flat out, I, I would I would like to experiment with pushing and taking small jungle camps like for the entire game. Um, I've seen it happen; it works really well. Well, it's something I don't see a lot, but like when I'm watching the mm -hmm. EU LCS, the the mid laners are getting 300 creeps at 24 minutes because they're getting tons of jungle camps. And I'm I'm, I'm curious to see how effective that would be in a solo queue environment. Like just flat okay. out, like. I can tell you why people don't freeze because a lot of gladiator players that play ADC they're not even that good. <laughs> that's that's true.
They're not good right. enough to just wait it out and have the patience and well, freeze. There's, and there's, there's, and freeze. There's, there's, there's two or three very specific times when it's really especially good like, to freeze. Like, oh, you're somebody, like when you get a very favorable trade and the creep wave is pushing against you. You can zone them. And five, like the creep wave is like five mage minions against like your two. GG lane over. Go freeze that shit. Go game go over. somewhere else. Next this lane. lane go, go, steal your own, <laughs> go steal your own junglers camps. Peace out. Like, you can't come back to this. Yeah. And, like, even in our scrims, we did that, like, once. And it was so detrimental Tulsa's to the other team. Tulsa's done it to me. Tulsa's yeah. done it to me. And they have like, to go back. It's like, they don't yo, feed. Yeah. yeah, they can't come back. And if they yeah. go, if they peace out, I'll just let that shit build up. And then when the creep is at their turret, I will tower dive or poke the crap yep. out of them. Yep. Like, it's and so that's free. that's how you win the game in 10 yeah. minutes. That's how you that's, win the game yeah. 10 minutes. Oh, we my see word. that in Bib, too. Like, when teams are... When somebody is just flat out better than the other team, like... And has wave control. I mean, it's it's not nearly as prevalent. I do find in league, but it's definitely there, and it's it's really obvious when you're just it's, you're well, you're in a bad well, to spot. To be very fair, to be very fair, it's a lot easier to just shove the wave. Like, it's so well, much easier. I mean, that's the basic strategy that I I see a lot of people do. It's like, okay, I'm in lane. My abilities are on cooldown at all times. I'm push the turret. I get ganked and I die. Like that's that's. That's Ashabel 101 from what I found. Um, <laughs> Ashabel 101. <laughs> Q on the Q on the back wave, miss miss everybody. Q in the back wave again, miss everybody on the turret. Bass goes behind me. I'm dead now. I may have. Is your knockback? Is your knockback on the Basco coming to you? <laughs> um, <laughs> first, I mean, for a basic strategy, it's good. I mean, if you got wards up, I mean, being pushed to their turrets a reasonably safe place to go. They have to use their spells to farm creeps. Um, you know, you you. You're in a dominating position. You just throw random spells under their tower. Like it's a good place to be, but uh, it's the easiest. Here's the thing, too. Like if you push up to the like, you know, you know, there's opportunities when freezing is amazing. But besides that, you know, if you're pushing up to their binding, you're doing two things. You're exposing yourself to jungler ganks because you cannot ward all of the, all of the available routes for you to be ganked by the jungler. Mm -hmm. Two. You're allowing yourself to put a lot of pressure on the enemies because of the way bindings work. It's really easy. Well, it's, it, it's relatively easy for an experienced player to harass under yep. the enemies under the binding, and they have to focus on getting last hits if they want to keep up with you. So you know you can get an advantage there. Um, you also have the option of roaming to another lane. Yep. Um, so pushing is is a strategy. It's just. There are opportunities when freezing the lane is going to just decimate your opponent. Like, there's, there's a scenario where if you out, out trade them, zone them, freeze the lane, and when the lane's at the turret, you go roam, the top lane can definitely not roam. Because if they roam and right. you win the engagement, they lose because they just lost three waves. They're down on the levels too, so they're going to yeah. lose the, they're gonna lose a 5v5 five because five they're down on levels experience. So in the best case scenario, you get a skirmish and it's a 4v3 or something like that and you win. And then yep. they get their gold back. That's cool, but you just got more of him than them in general because you got that gank off, and your other lane is even bigger. Okay, um, I want to kind of slow things down here, and uh, we've had some really good discussion, but I want to give chat a chance if they have any questions for Tulse or any of us or any topics they want to bring up. We'll do a little Q&A with the viewers for a few minutes here, and then we'll uh, wrap, wrap things up and uh, all go our separate ways. So if you guys have anything you want to bring up or... Um, yeah, questions, queries, whatever you got, now's your time. <laughs> Pluto's here. Ch chat will eventually catch up. They will catch questions. up. Definitely know. eating the evil Smash Champ. The evil what? Evil Smash Champ. Because C9 Mango won uh, Evolution for Super Smash Bros. C9 Mango won Evo? Yeah, for Smash. Is that a Rosco Mango? No. Oh. Yes. Okay. No, not not that Mango. Different oh, Mango. I was say, what? That's where he's been? <laughs> Winning what? Smash Brothers? Okay. A slightly more bad-mannered version. What um, does Tulse want to happen to ADCs? There you go. There you go, Tulse. Uh, Tulse, do you think reverting the base movement speed back to under 80 carries like the old days of uh, closed beta pre-blitz interruption would be a good idea? I don't think you don't think would it would help? Because okay. 80, series, 80 carries buy a lot of haste items to begin with, or at least items that have a little bit of haste. So, yeah, like, if you revert it back to the base, their late game will be even higher. And it'll be even harder for Bruisers to kind of, like, chase them. Uh, How do you my, fix 80 carry, then? My biggest critique with 80 carries is, like, 
Their mid game is awful. Yeah. Yeah, their mid game is literally awful. Their early game is pretty good because they have good poke, and their late game is garlic, obviously, because they're AD carry. But their mid game is like they get dove so hard, especially if like enemy teams have wither too, like, and you're not level ten, you don't have a dispel, you only have your blink. Like that's the worst feeling ever. But like. It's really hard to fix AD carries. Like you can't make their items cheap because then mages will exploit that, you know. And yeah. currently, a lot of mages and magic damage they're doing really, really well, especially with the divinity buff. And if you mm -hmm. just make their items like even better with the pen wise, then it's just not even well fair. Well, for example, divinity is really only great for mages because it's just flat out. Instead of giving you forty five mastery or forty five percent crit, it's like your abilities hit harder. Yeah. Um, do you think? An advanced tier item that's specifically geared towards AD carries that's not abolition because I think abolition is kind of shit. Like, you know, yeah, I think abolition is shit too. More items like that though, like designed like this is specifically for AD carries. Everybody else piss off. Like, like yeah. would that help? Yeah, but I feel like there's a big what if chance. They, what if they just reduce the price on dominance, gave it the divinity treatment? Uh, that would help. But, that would help. I, the yeah, the yeah, thing with making items specific to specific to like a, a very specific archetype is the fact that the item system is designed to to an archetype there are things that but cater there's an to inherent there, there are there are items that are that are that cater to a, an archetype but the whole point of it is to be incredibly flexible so if you make something that is i mean for example you have you have what veracity and ambition and and like on hit stuff that's almost always going to be for attack speed shapers and or just you know, range attack based shapers auto attack based shapers and yeah that's that caters to them but it's not specifically for them i wish i would just wish there were more items that gave adcs more options that is com comparable to bruisers cuz like if the enemy team is like high on yeah. attack speed mm -hmm. bruiser can pick up equilibrium if mm -hmm. the enemy's like mage is out of control, you pick up a subjugation. If like they're running double AD carry, you pick up an order early, stuff like that. But ADC is like you got this like cookie cutter build that you have to go for every single game, no matter what. Wow. And your success is kind of like dependent on that. And there, there's like two. There's the the mastery build or the AOE build or hybrid build kind of yeah. thing. But I, the the AOE I think that only like works on out. Kentu and maybe Kentu. Tax a little bit. <laughs> okay, and, sure. And yeah. the fact that Equilibrium just hard counters that entire build plus Wither. Mm -hmm. It just makes it really sad and sure. lackluster. Sure. I, I mean, if, I think, if you get I think, wither, I say you pop exceed. Doesn't that counter it? No, because you're on a speed. <laughs> I know, it's dropped by a lot. You can pop sure. Dispel, and that'll counter it, and everything yeah. else on you. <laughs> yeah. um, but used everything. But what about, you know, what happened to this, what happened to the pain builds? People started building pain early. It seemed like a nice mid-game item. It's got, a, it's got an efficient price point. I don't like pain uh, because, like, it gives you mortal strike. It gives you crit. Is your power, but like yeah. it doesn't pack the same punch. It doesn't launch you into like that god mode status. Not like dominance no. does. And no. when you and when you but dominance rush... doesn't either unless you have another crit item. Nah, dominance. Uh, like I... okay, there are a lot of team fights where I was varying when I used to play AD carry. I W'd forward. I was auto attacking a calm, and suddenly I got a fat crit for seven hundred and he died. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. I hate. That. And I was like, "Whoa! I just won the team fight for my team." And then it's like, I, I really, I really disagree. I a lot. Of, I see I'm a lot calm. of people that say, "Oh, dominant sucks unless you don't have other crit." I was like, "It's twenty percent crit." Like, uh, in, a, in a team fight where you're getting Something ten autos off, that, that's still twenty. That's twenty crits or twenty yeah. percent, or so. That's two, that's two huge. ten crits. Like. It it it's not a bad item. It it has this weird rap. It's like it's sixty fucking power. Like where where else are you gonna go for a sixty power item that also gives you twenty percent crit and doubles your your crit damage or or point five extra is it two fifty percent it like that's uh, it's a great item. It's just it's expensive for what it does. A lot expensive. of its item budget is spent yeah, on that passive. I agree. If, it's too if it was, so if it was get the 3, most 000, out of it, it doesn't yeah. really start. It doesn't really start being value town until you have another crit item. That's when it turns into. You can you can take off the power, like a bit of the power on dominance, and make it three thousand. I'll be totally okay with that. Yeah, that I would imagine. be. That I would imagine. be good. The crit, the crit is what matters. That would dominance. be like the divinity treatment, basically, right? Yeah. Here, w Waste on Vex asked, what would be an example of an enemy composition, strength, etc., that you feel like carries have a lack of options against? Seven bruisers. <laughs> Kendra, Just... you put Kendra, Basco, Moya, uh, Kensu, ADC, and like Amina. Like that'd be the composition. <laughs> It's just that I think when when Bruiser's power spike and when AD carries power slump is like perfect, perfectly opposite. 
Mm. And bruisers are like meant to eat eighty carries, so it's just it's a it's a bad it's a bad time. It's a bad time for ADCs. But you know, at the end game, ADCs are suddenly like, oh my gosh, how can we win this game without an ADC? Or thank yeah. God we have an ADC. You know, well, it's I mean, like I used to joke, you know, I well, not that I used to, I still say it, like, like Vex, it's like having a time bomb on your team. Like, or if you're playing against an enemy Vex who's worth his salt, it's like, yeah. that's a time bomb. We can't, we have to win the game before 45 minutes or the Vex bomb is going to blow up and kill also, everyone. But I also feel like if, if teams are equally skilled, if a team is catered towards the early game more, in comparison to the late game more in the early game, the early game team will always win. I, I, I don't yeah. like the word always win, but I will agree and say they have a very, a, very high chance. They have a higher chance of winning. I mean, playing for late game is, is a losing strategy as far as I'm concerned. Yes. You never, you never you play never... for late game when you're ahead. Right. Yes. Playing for late game is okay. Mm. Take everything well, you can. There's nothing behind. Not looking so good. Now, I mean, granted, yeah, playing someone like Nisa who's just going to run in and win the game from the AD carry position, like, I mean, I can certainly respect that, but like, just because you have a Vex doesn't mean that you have, say, a reduced chance of winning. It's just you got to pull. You, uh, what am I? I don't even know what I'm saying. Man. Vex. <laughs> 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 I trailed off, but, you know, fuck it. it Vex. It's good. It's good. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, maybe it's just also some of the mid tier items for ADCs are a little lackluster. If you guys think Abolition sucks, I mean, it's, I think time is really good. I think time um, is good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Time is really good, and compared to time, abolition is like a thousand, a thousand vim for what twenty five power and ten damage. Like, like, like nine hundred and forty five. Items. items is like you're you're you have this build that you really really want to go. To, you want to follow, right? Like if if at most you can get like every single tier three item in one buy, that is like your dream. But in the in like if shit goes down, and you get screwed, and you're like, oh my god, I'm losing to this kindred and this calm. I really need to buy a will. You pick up a will. And then you're like, oh my god, this bruiser is destroying me. I gotta get a resilience. You pick up a resilience, and then you're just shooting yourself in the foot because right. it does nothing for your build. That's a great point. I I wish somehow I could turn early game mitigation items into my DPS mid game. Yeah. Um, well, be- preservation is not. Well, you I can mean, with betrayal, right? Betrayal is like the betrayal. only like right. the only thing, or like valor. Oh, also, yeah. I don't like that. Me, how, do, how do you feel about the fact that there's no tenacity on any armor items, only magic resist items? I don't care for that. Well, you don't. You don't think it would make crowd, crowd control because there's already so many armor items. items. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Freedom is not problem, even a magic resist item. It's a. It's a haste item. Yeah, but you guys mentioned like preservation as a good carry item or valor. Like those. Those items don't have the haste and mastery you want to crit. It's just power, and like power is a great Defense. stat to do I like whatever. Power, but but like, 80, 80 power, oh boy. Oh. I mean, and that shield saves me so many times. Oh. It, it's a good item, but yeah. it, it feels so like good. my 80 carry isn't a force until I've got 50% crit, dominance, and penetration. And like Great. building even betrayal or any of those items it doesn't feel like it puts me there it just puts me in like a not totally shit spot but like it, it doesn't get, build I, it delays the armageddon clock but it well it also delays your armageddon seats. though that's what i'm saying like, it delays if if adc getting full build is the armageddon clock it delays that but it helps you through that mid game slump you might need it to survive to that long right yeah it's a trade off yeah it's a it trade off i i wish there was mid-game items that would efficiently build into my four item build that makes me yes. but, do but do we really it. but do we really think about it do we really want ADC, adcs to be like good good exceptional no i think i think that really- I, well i think like hopefully okay let me make sure i got my webcam right instead of having AD instead carries of early- look like this i want to see them more like this i see them as kind of like a parabola because they start off pretty good Laning phase is pretty good for them, and then it's the mid game where they suck, and then or late game where they are just like, oh. But uh, it, uh, again, maybe the whole thing is just fixed with bruisers being on par. Like maybe that's just the hump. Like I don't know. It's hard to uh, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah. Short yeah. short term, the dominance price nerf is like my go to fix. I I would love to hit my power spike five hundred vim shorter. That that feels good to me. Yep, I agree. Um, all right if there's no other questions or concerns anyone has i think that is going to be about all the time we have uh tonight 
Uh, thank you guys very much for uh, watching, hanging out with us, and griping with us. It's good. It's good to have these discussions and, 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 and have some passion behind the, the words that we're saying and the feelings that we're feeling because that means people care. And if people care, that means Waystone's doing something right. And uh, we're not all just wasting our time. So, uh, final words, uh, gentlemen. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for coming uh, out and watching. Be patient with the iterative beta game that you are choosing to take part in. Yep. Take a look around at some of the other options you guys have. Yep. I, I'd say, yeah. like, learn like learn what people do and try to exploit. That's, that's, all, that's MOBA. Yeah, man. And you exploit people's weaknesses, and then you win the game. And then you, you feast on their salty tears. Exactly. Like Moya feasts on salt. <clears throat> She does. Yeah. It sustains her. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> this has been the Money Pigs live cast. Feel free to follow any one of us on Twitch or on Twitter. The names are pretty similar to what you see here. Um, other than that, there is no battle in the bot lane this Friday. What is coming up this week? As there's Sick Note. Sick Note Sick tournament Note. is this Friday or Saturday? 6 a.m. hype. Saturday. Jesus. Is it starting at 6 a.m.? No, it probably ends at 6 a.m. Oh. <laughs> So they changed their format. I thought. I thought hey, there was. Yeah, they changed the format, so it'll probably. Be hey, better. did they? Did the last? Did last weekend's tournament just like everybody just kind of quit by the end? What DGSL? Yeah. Uh, what happened in the final was because uh, BOB already had like first seed place no matter what, even if we lost to QDC. Uh -huh. And then like my team was like, we kind of want to troll. And then my team was like, yo, that's disrespectful. You shouldn't troll. And that's then true. we ended up kind of halfway trolling and not really trolling. And then. We're just like, okay, let's call it a tie. <laughs> so you guys what. ended up playing a match or something? We played two matches. We won one and we lost one. Okay. <laughs> then we just called it a tie. Because if they won the second one, we would have to go into another set. And it was already 1 a.m. And we were like... Go. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you guys again. I, I This is for real the sign-off now. I'm turning off the stream. Good night, <laughs> everyone. Thank you for...